Ladies and gentlemen, greetings from Seipu, greetings from Toronto. We return with another scintillating and sparkling guest for you, the academician writer, TEDx speaker, creative writing mentor, biographer, essayist, and novelist, Dr. Santosh Bakayan. It's great pleasure to host Dr. Santosh Bakaya, an Indian award-winning author known for her works on Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. for this 11th episode of the limited series of literary and critical conversations. She has a rich humor. Here goes her brief intro. A poet, novelist, biographer, TEDx speaker, creative writing mentor, acclaimed for her poetic biography of Mahatma Gandhi, Ballad of Bapu, and Only in Darkness Can You See the Stars, biography of Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. Santosh Bakaya's 23 books encompass multiple genres. She is a recipient of several prestigious national and international awards. She runs a very popular column, Morning Meanderings, learningandcreativity.com, part of which is also an ebook. Her works have been translated into many languages invited to many national and international festivals, SARC Sufi Festival, Bhopal Lit Fest, Ahmedabad Lit Fest, Hamilton Literary Festival. She has conducted workshops in different parts of the country. Her collaborative e-books, Vodka by the Volga, with Dr. Ampad Koshi 2020, and From Prince of Ghat to Peer Panjal, with Gopal Lahiri 2021, are number one Amazon bestsellers. Recently published, What is the Meter of the Dictionary by Authors Press 2022, The Cat Nama with Dr. Sunil Sharma, Authors Press 2023, For Better or Worse with Ramendra Kumar and Dr. Rampat Koshi, Authors Press 2023 have been extremely well received. On behalf of Setu, I extend a hearty welcome to this high caliber, prolific, multidimensional personality. Welcome to the 11th episode of the limited series of literary and critical conversations, Santosh. Thank you so much, Dr. Sangeeta Sharma. What an honor it is to be here. And uh, congratulations, Setu, for this innovative venture once again. And I keep doffing my hat uh, to all your innovations. So uh, it's an honor to be here uh, in this limited video, video series of literary and critical conversations. And I'm very, very happy to be here. And by the way, did I tell you that you're looking very, very gorgeous, Sangeeta? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your kind words. As usual, of course. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to this interaction. And this Same here. Yeah. Well, to begin with, I present a short excerpt from the last chapter of Ballad of Bapu, titled Bapu's Death. Here it goes. Of humility and truthfulness, a peculiar combination. To Pearl S. Buck, this was another crucifixion. Of a man so rare, so just and fair, who had robbed the world with his moral perception, his heart had stopped, his voice was stilled, into many a heart a fire he had instilled. His adversaries were mighty, but this man of piety, with a solitary perseverance, the earth had tilled. The King of England, the Archbishop of Canterbury, 
mourned the loss of an impoverished country. Chiang Kai-shek and President Truman rued the death of so fine a man. Nations shocked by the loss extraordinary, the Dalai Lama of Tibet, the president of France, dignitaries world over were in a trance. In times of utter moral decadence, this man of non-violence had towered over pygmies commanding reverence. That's a poignant tribute to the father of the nation, Santosh. Honestly it's speaking, an exclusive very, piece. Yes. Um, cheeks were streaked with tears. And I was in a sort of a trance while I was writing this, especially the last chapter. And uh, even when I'm reciting these lines, you know, a tear just flow. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So I'm in a trance. I was in a trance while I was writing this. Yeah. These are very touching words. Great tribute to the father of the nation. Well, to start with the interaction. How did you hit upon the idea of writing the poetic biography of Mahatma Gandhi, Ballad of Papu? Well, uh, Sangeeta, I've answered this question many a time. And uh, this was because of a student, a very, mm -hmm. very arrogant student of my MPhil class. And uh, he was saying some uh, derogatory things about Mahatma Gandhi. He said, Madam Gandhi ke din lad gaye, ek Hitler ki zarurat hai ab. So I asked him, uh, aapne Gandhi padha hai? Aapne padha hai? Aapne ke... He said, no, madam, I don't want to read Gandhi. I don't want to read his experiments with truth. If you write a Mahakavya, because I'm a poet, if you write a Mahakavya, then I promise I'll read it. So oh. this was a chat he threw at me. And he uh, used a particular word, a very, very derogatory word. For him. So I left mm -hmm. the class. Oh. I did not say anything. The entire class came running after me, Madam Moto Asi Bolta and all that. So I said, no, nothing doing. I'll not come to the class unless he apologizes. So he came uh, immediately after that, he came to the my house and he said, Madam, Galti away of the bache and all that. But up please. Achoo. So this was <laughs> this was just an idea, but mm -hmm. I started mulling over the possibility of writing a poetic biography of Gandhi. And uh, I I have repeated this, I have said this many a time that I I'm very, very fond of writing limericks. Right from uh -huh. childhood, I used to write limericks. You have written 200 limericks in your childhood. Yeah. More than, more than that. So uh, I used to write limericks and there was a time when I used to think that I was Edward Lear in disguise. Honestly speaking, as, <laughs> as a child, I, I used to think that. So I started mulling over the idea. Then uh, things started taking shape. And I started writing this biography in the rhyme scheme of A A B B A, mm -hmm. uh, let me uh, recite a limerick that my papa was very fond of. There was a man from Nantucket mm -hmm. who kept his cash in a bucket. He had a daughter named Nan who mm -hmm. ran away with Nan, and as for the bucket, Nan took it. So this was oh. the rhyme scheme A A B B A. So I uh, wrote the entire book in this rhyme scheme, and I did a lot of research, of course. But I left midway. Mm -hmm. Then Renu because uh, she had asked me, she had uh, cajoled me uh, to write this. So I, she called me. So I had forgotten about it because I have this habit of writing uh, on uh, 10 themes simultaneously. So I started writing something else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then when she asked me to complete it, then I completed it. And uh, it has 350 pages. And uh, immediately after that, uh, my mother was very keen I, that uh, I read that online somewhere. Uh, I had dedicated this to her. She couldn't see it. It was never launched. But she had told me that Gandhi par kitab hai, ye bestseller hogi. And it is a bestseller and even detractors have praised it. So uh, I'm happy. And the first copy of this book I gave to that guy. He's a, he's a well-known poet in Rajasthan now. And he teaches Gandhian studies. And he was a detractor is a Gandhian. So this mm -hmm. is my greatest mm -hmm. This is how it happens. And uh, even the a, Yeah, very uh, interesting background and memories of your mother are associated with this book. Uh, that's a phenomenal work you have done. Um, 
And what and inspired you to, yeah? yeah. Just a sec. When I sent the manuscript to Tushar Gandhiji, mm -hmm. uh, he said, uh, uh, allow me to write the foreword in uh, poetry. So he okay. has also written a foreword. Great. So, uh, <laughs> so I have met him in person several I times. Know. Yes. I know. Uh, he but, inaugurated the Gandhian Study Center in our college. Oh, you told me once. Yeah. He's a wonderful human being, a gem of a man. Yeah. And with a tremendous sense of humor. <laughs> with a tremendous sense of humor. I yeah. Know. And what inspired you to write the biography of Martin Luther King Jr.? Uh, okay. Only in darkness you see the stars. This was also because of my MPhil student. But this time, uh, they none passed any derogatory comment about him because they did not know anything about him. This was in Gandhian studies class. So mm -hmm. they said, Madam, we know only about his I have a dream speech. Mm -hmm. So I made uh, listen to all his speeches and they were just mesmerized and hooked. So uh, one of them suggested, Madam, aap, uh, inke bhi so Achha. I was, uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was thinking of doing my postdoctoral research on King because I had read a lot on King. But then I uh, said, why not? Why not write a biography? So this uh, uh, just happened. And uh, this is also a bestseller, and people have uh, nice words for this book mm -hmm. also. So, uh, and it has and, come out so well. And uh, yeah, it has come out very well. And uh, the part of the success of this book is because of the publisher. They took pains over it, and uh, they were the ones who suggested that it should have photographs also. So mm -hmm. I wrote to the American Center because I was doing my research there. So they okay. said they'll send the photographs. But uh, the they were in a, the publisher was in a hurry to get it published, to get it uh, sent to the printer. Mm -hmm. uh, they had already sent the book to the printer without the photographs because uh, it was uh, late. But then mm -hmm. I got a reply at the last moment. So they pulled the book back from the printers and the these uh, uh, photographs were inserted. And they have added, they have enriched the book, especially his uh, India visit in 59. So... Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm also very, very uh, fond of this book because I've worked quite a lot on this. I researched and I was very, uh, I, I was also sort of in a trance while I was writing this. And I used to imagine those scenes and the Montegavari bus boycott and the people. And once I imagined myself amongst the uh, walkers uh, standing next to an old woman who had said that I'm walking for my children. I imagined certain scenes. I was uh, writing this in a trance. Mm -hmm. Beautiful and, book cover it has. Oh, they, the publisher did. And once, <laughs> this, this is so funny. Once I, while I was writing this, I was, uh, I remembered all the speeches. Now I've forgotten them. But uh, there's a particular line. Over the beasts, bones and jumbled remains of civilizations are written the words too late. Mm -hmm. I, one day I found myself in a dream uh, re repeating these words. Standing on a standing at the dais or somewhere and repeating these words. Uh, this was the sort of trance I was in mm -hmm. while writing this. So this is how it happened, and uh, people are still reading it, and uh, they love the book, and I also love. It. Yeah. Thank it's you. Always for... inner inspiration when you write such yeah. works. So, uh, as you said, while writing Ballad of Bapu, you were in a trance. Writing this, you were in a trance. So. A chance. I was. I used to dream of King. I used to think think of King. I used to imagine myself sitting in their drawing room, and it was a very surrealistic sort of a thing, you know. And that's interestingly the teaching of Lord Buddha as well. It yeah. still holds good at the end of darkness exactly. is light always. Exactly. exactly. So they have inspired me a lot. And I'm happy that uh, even the detractors of Bapu, they have read the book and they had uh, some good things to say about it. Mm -hmm. Both the books. What parallels do you find between Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. apart from the universally known similarities? Well, of course, uh, during the Montgomery bus boycott, uh, King and his uh, people, they had repeatedly mentioned that uh, it is the invisible shadow of Mahatma Gandhi that is inspiring us. 
and uh, whatever happened during the Montgomery bus boycott was inspired by Gandhi. And then there's a very interesting episode, interesting thing uh, that happened during uh, this, uh, after the Montgomery bus boycott, he had written his autobiography, mm-hmm. A Strike for Freedom. He was autographing this in a store. And suddenly a woman, Aizola Kari, her name was, she came and stabbed him. And he was in uh, the hospital for many days. Mm-hmm. And the first thing that he said after he was out of danger was, please don't uh, punish her. She did not know what she did. Mm-hmm. And uh, here, uh, this uh, Gandhiization, he says, had uh, begun. And then another thing that happened was that uh, he was uh, not at home when his house was uh, bombed. His wife and his little daughter, infant, she was there. I see. And they escaped death. But he was at a meeting and then he, when he ran there, he got the shock of his life when he heard that this had happened. And then he says that in his autobiography, he says that the entire night he couldn't sleep. He kept thinking of getting a gun permit. Oh. The entire night he was in the throat. He was perched on the horns of a dilemma saying that the, in the morning when I'll get up, I'll get a gun permit and I'll kill that man. So he says that I was not a true Gandhian then. But in the morning uh, when uh, all these demons left him and he said that he, he dropped the idea and he he forgave that man. So he was inspired by Gandhi at every step. And then after the success of the Montgomery bus boycott, where mm-hmm. Gandhi was posted at the time, he came to India along with his wife. And there are wonderful photographs of his India visit you must have seen. Uh, and then he was here for a month. Here, here he met many people and he said the spirit of Gandhi is very much alive. And it is... Uh, we have a power now. It is not the power of gun. It is the power of love, peace, and non-violence. So he had become a true Gandhian by the time he was 39, by the time he was assassinated. Mm-hmm. So uh, he followed the... Fascinating facts. So, uh, it's Fascinating. Really yeah, about the two top thought leaders and revolutionary figures, advocates of peace, non-violence, and cooperation. Well, tell us about your other works. Well, uh, I keep forgetting that I started my literary career, or lack of it, by writing for young adults. And uh, I had uh, written seven mystery series, mystery stories, uh, mystery of this and mystery of that. And uh, seven I wrote, three were published, and then uh, my interests wavered, then I started writing something else. These were uh, the mystery of the relic, mystery of the Jhalana fort, mystery mm-hmm. of the pine cottage, and they were very, very successful mm-hmm. uh, in Rajasthan. And then the publisher, I'll not take the name, but now he's a big publisher. He, he was uh, very keen that I should publish the other books also, but then I lost interest and uh, they were just uh, written on pieces of paper. Mm-hmm. They were never published. But this uh, mystery of the relic, uh, I have told you earlier, it was very, very popular because it was about a ghost. It was about a ghost, 18-year-old ghost who doesn't know that she's a ghost. She has fallen victim to terrorism. Mm-hmm. And, and she says, uh, please listen to my story. Please listen to my story. And in this uh, house, which is called the Relic, uh, she haunts this house, uh, moving from room to room, telling everyone, please listen to my story. But no one listens to her story. And in the end, she relates how she was killed. And so I... Uh, it was so popular that I translated it into Hindi and we also staged it and mm-hmm. it was a success. The ghost in this, the ghost in this uh, play, it was a play, is a very, very popular uh, TV anchor right now. She's in Delhi and uh, she interviews all those celebrities and all. I'll someday uh, tell you the name. So she acted beautifully well, wonderfully well and she was... Uh, uh, no, she was not acting for the first time. The others were acting for the first time, but she was she was a seasoned actress. She had acted in Rajasthani uh, films and all documentaries. So mm-hmm. that was a tremendous. So th- uh, these mystery books. Then, of course, then I switched over to poetry. Uh, this uh, Where Are the Lilacs, Under the Apple Boughs, O Hawk, Songs of the Legends, Principal Spoons, and Pea Green Roads. And then Book of Personal Essays, Flights from a Terrace. It was very, very popular. It was an ebook on uh, Smashwords. And uh, then I wrote this Bring Out the Tall Tales with Avijit Sarkar. 
some other collaborative books uh, with Gopal Lahiri, uh, Prince of Bhat to Peer Panjal, Dampat Koshi, Vodka by the Volga. And all these, they were uh, Amazon number one bestsellers. And uh, with Raminder Kumar, Melange of um, Mutants and Mavericks. And then uh, this Cat Nama, it was, it was of course a tremendous success and people, they want a multi-author anthology, which we are uh, thinking of uh, on those lines. So uh, just uh, an hour back, someone mm -hmm. had sent me a very interesting photograph. Ma'am, uh, are you thinking of an anthology, a multi-author anthology? I said, yes, we are. We'll do something about it. So I'm happy, I'm uh, grateful that uh, people, uh, I don't know, people like reading my books and uh, maybe because it is, uh, uh, it is because of the fact that I write from the heart, I, my head sits billion when I'm driving, <laughs> my head sits billion and my heart does the driving. So uh, what comes from the heart appeals to me. So I, my books are read and I'm happy. That's my an impressive book. lineup of works. And oh, Hawk, of course. Oh, Hawk, uh, it was it yeah. is still uh, very, very um, popular amongst kids mm -hmm. and uh, in schools and colleges. And I'm uh, asked to recite from this book because it is very, uh, children uh, like ghosts. And they especially like this uh, incident of, uh, th there's a writer. There's a writer here. Uh, I have called him the writer recluse. He I has know. got yeah, writer recluse. He has gone into the wilderness. He has made a small cottage there and he sits there and writes. He's mm -hmm. the writer recluse. And at night, at night, all sorts of bibliophiles, they come and they sit outside his house, outside his cottage. Mm -hmm. And they peep, uh, yeah, and they peep through his window and ask him for the old classics. So this is a sort of satire because people have stopped reading and they've become ghosts. Now they want to read books. Someone asks him, for you see? Very interesting. <laughs> and students, they have enacted these scenes. And there is a uh, enact, reenactment. The witches, there are three witches. And mm -hmm. I have uh, the very funny uh, chants that I've created in the book. So this book also um, received a lot of acclaim and uh, awards also. And the interesting thing is that Avijit Sarkar has uh, illustrated it. There are some wonderful illustrations in the book. Which, oh. uh, it's a, it's a book which people like. So I'm, right. I'm happy. <laughs> it's well, very, it's a oh, known fact that uh, you have the special gift of understanding and communicating with the feathery and flying uh, friends during your morning meanderings. And this knack has helped adding up to your own inspiring Uber. So please tell us something about the Cat Nama, your recent work. Well, of course, uh, the Cat Nama, I think uh, the villain of the piece is Dr. Sunil Sharma. He made me. <laughs> <laughs> he, was after me. he was after me to collaborate on this. I was, uh, I, uh, I had this in mind, but somehow he came to know that I was interested in cats. And then mm. uh, he asked me, let's do it. I said, why not? Then uh, we started writing on it. And this is also a tremendous success. And people love the stories and they say that we also want to write stories on cats. Please uh, write and uh, please edit. Uh, please ask Dr. Sunil Sharma uh, and you, of course, to edit a multi-author uh, anthology on cats and dogs, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is, and of course, uh, let me tell you, uh, Dr. Sangeeta, that Sunil Char Dr. Sunil Sharma's uh, stories are excellent in this book. And I was uh, rereading re the last story and the way he writes his uh, crisp and taut dialogue sentences, so reminiscent of Hemingway. So they, uh, people, I keep telling everyone that you should read uh, what uh, uh, he, he writes, Dr. Sunil Sharma. His stories are excellent. And uh, I know he must be blushing somewhere, but this is a fact. And I'm not exaggerating here. His stories are... People uh, should... Uh, That's true about the... his fiction books. Very so, racy especially... and uh, riveting. Yeah, very, very riveting. And the way he plays with birds. That's very inspiring. And I keep telling the youngsters wherever I go that they should read 
they do, they are not uh, for a meeting the youngsters they are hardly ever eat they say and the argument that they give is ki madam agar hum kisi ko padhenge na to kya pata hum unko imitate karne lage kya karna acha imitate karne lage hum hum kya pata kai baar aisa na ho jaye ki koi sentence wahan se hum uthaye to wo aisa na lage ki plagiarized hai so this is the argument they give they try to justify their follies hmm. and shortcut by saying that this might happen if you read so they don't read if you are inspired by their works uh, there's no harm in it but of course imitation should not be done this is uh, very very important reading the but in classes, these uh, deteriorating times you can't say <laughs> people are in a hurry to be published uh, uh, honestly speaking right now i have 10 manuscripts lying Uh, all edited ten times, but still uh, I'm feeling apprehensive to send them because क्या पता कोई typo हो क्या पता कुछ हो so but uh, I have seen these youngsters uh, uh, they are just impatient to get mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right true And yes I totally agree with this fact you need to be very conscientious uh, oh, yeah. to deliver quality yeah. So you talking to me about birds? Well, I am very very fond of birds. Hmm. And uh, this book, uh, "Flights from My Terrace," someone was telling me the other day. The, the title is very interesting. Before this house, we were staying near the airport. Mm-hmm. So I would sit on the terrace and I would see the flights. And uh, near the airport, there were a lot of birds. Mm. So "Flights from My Terrace" was inspired by the birds. And by the aeroplanes mm-hmm. so and i was also posted in bharatpur uh, rajasthan in the government college it is the most notorious college of rajasthan uh, where the students were older than me and they would ask me madam uh, to in the uh, dialect to padhbe aaiye ya padhbe aaiye then i joined when i joined i was just like oh, i was a kid i was mm-hmm. uh, that, that was the sort of uh, and what and then the and this bharatpur Mm-hmm. Is of course the bird sanctuary is there. Um, the bird sanctuary. I would go to the bird sanctuary, and I was I became um, very hooked onto the birds. And then uh, nature. I'm very close to nature. I love nature. Mm-hmm. And writing about nature. Most of my poems are about nature. Most of my stories feature nature in on its use. And then Kashmir is a uh, part of my uh, this book. Uh, The sky full of balloons is all about uh, Kashmir. It is all about uh, the nature of Kashmir. So uh, this is very much a part of me, nature. Mm-hmm. We wish you success for this collaboration, the Cat Nama, that has got good critical reception and is being discussed on social media so much. Yeah, people love. Uh... loving it and they uh, someone was telling me uh, uh, that they were they had uh, carried it with uh, them in the bus in the planes and uh, the other passengers they were peering into it and they wanted to read it too uh, and they asked them whether they could uh, get it in the usa so mm-hmm. i lost i don't think it's available there it's yet amazon.com so that hmm is- Well, how has been the general reception of your works? I don't uh, want to blow my trumpet, but I'm very happy that people um, have shared their love on my books. In uh, in fact, on all my books, and uh, this uh, all of them, they were bestsellers. And this sky full of balloons that has gone in the, into the second print, it was. Uh, they, and some people they, uh, it's a novel. Some people uh, think that it is an autobiographical novel. It is not an autobiographical novel because uh, the character Preeti there is a chatterbox. Mm-hmm. Think mm-hmm. that I am a, and I hail from Kashmir, so this uh, uh, must there must be some autobiographical elements. There are some autobiographical elements because my father, mm-hmm. the man mr rana he is a sort of a reincarnation of my dad he was a professor of english and he was very very particular about grammar and uh, he was 
I don't say, want to use the word grammar Nazi, but he was a sort of a grammar Nazi. And uh, uh, so this, uh, one of the characters uh, takes after my dad. So mm -hmm. uh, all my books, uh, people have loved the books and uh, and that is, uh, I think, because of the blessings of my parents of Jay. Yeah, it's no surprise you are such an open book on the digital media with your candid blogs and four words. Did I tell you that uh, this O Hawk, uh, this O Hawk was written on um, uh, this, uh, the Significant League, it was rejected stuff then, started by Dr. Ambatkochi. And mm -hmm. when I started, I did not know what I was writing because I am... Uh, I have this mad streak in me, you know, I start anything and I, it turns into something. So I was writing this, uh, I wrote about, uh, I wrote for about 10 days and it was, it turned out to be very surrealistic and spooky and there were ghosts there and all. And then I oh. suddenly killed the characters there, who was the drummer, who was a very interesting character, the drummer, who would uh, sing songs and uh, say twin things and all. So one uh, day I killed him. I killed him. And then uh, I keep seeing this and then there was a barrage of messages from people. Madam, why did you kill him? You are the writer, you revive him. I said, but I've killed him. How do I revive him? So mm -hmm. actually he had fallen down the cliff. So in the next uh, part, I pulled him up the cliff and then mm -hmm. he started. <laughs> okay. So people love that too. So uh, this has become so popular that it has been enacted in schools and colleges. Certain uh, scenes from this especially the scenes of the witches. And uh, when one of the witches sees a mobile phone, she's so fascinated that she goes into a trance. She starts chanting some mantra and something of that sort. She says, what is this and all. So people, uh, <laughs> they say that this is a funny book and they shower a lot of love on this. And uh, Dr. Ampat Koshi gave me this award, the first real award. When it was um, given, it had a cash prize of one lakh rupees. I did not uh, take the... Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. This is the cash prize, but I, and I, I, in fact, I had a fight with him because he's, I told him that this is madness. You don't uh, award madness. I said, I don't want the, the award. There are so many other writers in the group. If the, I had a fight with him for many days, but then he said, I am the, I am the judge and the jury. So I have uh, to uh, give the award. I decide who uh, the, to give the award to. So this was the first real award. <laughs> mm -hmm. Supernatural elements you have uh, in lot many books, I think, and they evoke a lot of interest. Yeah, yeah, they evoke a lot of interest. I have written uh, oh, many books. and ghosts, all these you have. Oh, I have a fascination for ghosts. In fact, the first poem that I wrote was about a fort which was haunted by ghosts. It was in the fourth standard, I got a prize too. And then I used to write in Hindi, in Parag, and um, not in Chandamama. Hmm. <laughs> Great. So, How do you define poetry as an important form of communication? Well, poetry is everywhere. You communicate in a different manner in poetry. And uh, uh, of course, let me tell you that my first form of uh, communication was poetry. Mm -hmm. I used to limericize everything. I used to talk in limericks. Mm. A time and I was talking in limericks. So, uh, so, so that uh, the students in the school, they would study for cover when they saw me coming because they would say, Abhi limericks mein baat karegi. So it, <laughs> it is a form of communication where uh, it, is, it is up to you to interpret poetry as you wish. Uh, it can be a short trick, it can have a message. And uh, that reminds me of an incident. I had um, written a poem and I had also written a prose piece about a particular scene I had been very fascinated with because I go for these morning walks and it was uh, three, four years back that I had gone for this walk and um, suddenly uh, this uh, rat picker, seven, seven, eight years old, he used to be there scavenging. And uh, that day I saw him uh, with a rat sack, with a sack. Of, and then uh, as I was walking, suddenly it started raining. Hmm. He just left the rucksack there and he ran and he started dancing in the rain. 
it was such a cute scene the boy uh, dancing in the rain uh, the, the rain drops on his and i wrote a poem on that it, uh, and i wrote i wrote a poem and i wrote, I wrote a prose piece also and uh, i posted it uh, straight on facebook and immediately uh, i got a call from um, sujatha mathai i did not know her then she called me santosh i said yes i did not know her i hadn't talked to her so she said uh, uh, that poem of yours is uh, brilliant i can imagine i can imagine that rat because dancing in the rain and i want to dance too she was a dancer too she had uh, she, she i had acted in plays also so i can never forget that the way she called me and then after that uh, she continued calling me and in fact uh, when she died i hadn't seen the message box i saw there was a video call which i hadn't received which i hadn't uh, i felt very bad hmm. so communication poetry can communicate in uh, different ways it uh, can leave you with an esoteric message it can uh, leave you the way you want to interpret it uh you see a cloud i see a cloud you see a cloud and uh, clouds can be interpreted differently by you you see the you hear the leaves rustling mm-hmm. they can so poetry is a very powerful form of uh, communication yes. true it touches the chords of the heart and when it is uh, posted on social media it touches so many hearts and the feelings and so you get responses then you get responses so it's very touching at times and people call you unknown people strangers call you i love that poem of yours I, and sometimes i write and sometimes i forget about those poems and suddenly they come in my memories i say oh i have forgotten about this then i say it so this is a spontaneous you know I... spont- yeah outpouring of your emotions and uh, you you have an idea you have to write it down if you don't write it down it will just uh, whittle away it will... so i have got up at night midnight mm. 30 sometimes to write yeah that also i read somewhere you have put up so, yeah, it's good to write because, something uh, scribble and so that you remember it the idea disappears and um, so this uh, this i have i think happens with uh, everyone and i keep saying that poetry is a polyglot it has a, a different it knows different languages it can talk in different languages it can uh, mean different things to different people so uh, poetry is uh, something which appeals to all and now i read out an excerpt from your collection of poems what is the meter of the dictionary for the viewers it's titled faint echoes here it goes sometimes they not sometimes they frown does anyone even know my name my dreams desires dreads why do they have such a condescending attitude towards me i am a security guard manning the gates of a posh colony in delhi after all one has to cater to the demands of the belly not just one belly but six my wife three kids and a very old mother do you know the other day she thought i was her long lost brother and she tied a rakhi on my wrist smiling the most endearing smile ever seen on the face of a sister so that's so, a wonderful excerpt from the meter of the dictionary this was a real incident i saw this man talking to the other man saying ki the secretary of the that house uh, house so this entire apartment they, he talks very rudely to me and i have so many problems and all so mm-hmm. i was uh, shocked on what they were saying so mm-hmm. he uh, used this nike cap pehen ke kya samajhta hai hamare dil mein jahan ke hum kitne pareshan hain so that touched me so uh, there's another quote i uh, keep uh, repeating this is by gary snyder he talks about poetry he says that it comes blundering over the boulders at night it comes to me at night especially it mm-hmm. comes blundering over the boulders at night it stays frightened outside the range of my campfire i go to meet it at the edge of the light so such mm-hmm. a powerful image you know 
and, uh, and this is this is the way poetry comes to me. It comes uh, stumbling, tumbling, and I also go stumbling, tumbling towards it, and I have to write it. Otherwise, it will get lost. So it just erupts. So all of, uh, whatever you are saying, I could think of Plato. I could think of Wordsworth. Plato said that uh, poets uh, they write in a frenzy. So here you are saying that it's madness in me and you told uh, Dr. Ampat Koshi that uh, for this madness are you awarding me? So I was just thinking about that and then spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings recollected in tranquility. So scribbling in a diary and then later writing when you have some free time, leisure. So that's the way how poets write. Yeah. You have to have a mad streak in you. Uh, this is what Robin Williams says in um, Dead Poet Society. Uh, everyone is born with a mad spark. You have to cling to that spark. So this is what I keep doing. I cling to that mad spark. And uh, I wreck madness all around. <laughs> that is why my family studies for cover whenever they, they see me around. So my husband has vanished into the room. <laughs> well, so, uh, uh, where uh, where do you find you have been speaking about it your inspiration where do you find your inspiration from for your prose and poetry you have been telling about that but if you could uh, express okay. more on it the inspiration is everywhere uh, you can also read out an excerpt of yours if you wish to. Yeah, the inspiration is everywhere. The inspiration is in the stories that I have read. When I was punished, I would go to the attic and there was a huge library there of discarded books. I would read. I, I think I must have read uh, thousands of books in the attic when I was sent as a, as a punitive action for my naughty deeds by my papa. Mm -hmm. And it, I started uh, being fond of ghosts and uh, so I, I have just a minute, I think, to read from mm -hmm. Oha. And this is sheer madness. And um, uh, so this is excerpt from Oha. It is on page 86. Mm -hmm. With the zest new, mm -hmm. the revolutionaries forward plowed, the nocturnal insects buzzed, and the trees sloughed. In the dark opulence above, the little stars twinkled, the breeze tried to humor the trees, bent and wrinkled. Kindly infusing the fresh air in their shriveled up veins, things looked eerie and there was churning in their brains. Seize the day, the poet said, raising an enthusiastic fist. Suddenly, in their line of vision, appeared a cloud of mist. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? The scared drummer stuttered. Clutching on tightly to his javelin, the javelin man muttered. From this cloud of mist, slowly appeared a dark silhouette. It started gliding towards them, and the owls started to hoot. What is it? What is it? The javelin man quivered, intensely alarmed. Everything they appeared to be enchanted and charmed. Under a tree, under a tree, with a conspiratorial air, two hunched figures sat. To who, to who, the owl again hooted and its wings fluttered a bat. So this is an extract from... <laughs> very nice, very appealing. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I had uh, a crazy time writing this Oha. I had gone mad. I was not in a trance then, I was... Uh, I had gone completely bonkers then while writing Oha. <laughs> uh, I remember the first time when I read one of your poems, it was about the kitchen. You had written something uh, while you were cooking and yeah. how you were trying to find out the, the ingredients. So that was wonderful. It appealed to me a lot. I was very much impressed. And since then, I have been reading your works. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so quote the quote that sums you best. 
Well, uh, this, I have always been fascinated by uh, Robin Williams in Dead uh, Poet Society and the, what he says about madness. Uh, we have this uh, spark of madness in us and we should cling, it, cling to it. This is uh, what I do all the time. I try to inject insanity into the sane world around. Mm -hmm. This is my myself. Uh, I try to I try to ins I try to inject some insanity into the sane world. People are very sane. People are very intelligent. But I feel that I'm only the mad person around by trying to inject some insanity. That's sane. awesome. You are a much sought after motivational speaker and also a mentor to young promising writers having conducted many creative writing workshops for their benefit. So today, what would be your message to the discerning audience? Well, my message to the youngsters is to read, read and read. Just one message to read. They don't read at all. They just want to write. They need to read mm -hmm. because by reading, you can uh, embrace your vocabulary. And let me tell you that I, in my childhood, from my childhood till the present, I have never consulted a dictionary. But I know the meanings. Why? Because uh, because because I read a lot. Everyone in our family read a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, we would know the meaning of the word because of the context. So and uh, because uh, we read a lot, we mm -hmm. I never consulted never consulted dictionary because uh, all of us who were, were supposed to read, uh, we read and we were also supposed to read at eight during dinner time. Papa had a dinner gong. He was very idiosyncratic about his dinner gong which he had bought from somewhere it was it lasted for a couple of months and mm -hmm. then it's a broke or something i have written a, a 10 or 12 poems on that too very humorous ones so uh, we were supposed to read and we were supposed to discuss books so we read all the classics mm -hmm. all of us i see we read mm -hmm. uh, intense standard i read uh, dickens i read uh, <coughs> hardy i read all the plays of shakespeare mm -hmm. uh, and i I remember the dialogues, I remember the scenes. Now I don't have forgotten many, but uh, it was from the 10th standard that I got hooked to reading and I never consulted a dictionary because, mm -hmm. uh, because of the reading, I knew the meaning. So this is what I keep telling my students that you should read. You have become, uh, you procrastinate. You say, Madam, time ka hai? Writer's block ho gaya. Writer's block kaan se ho gaya jab likha hai nahi hai? Lame excuses they have. <laughs> But we have to keep uh, inspiring and yeah, telling so, yeah. them because uh, otherwise they will not do anything. And uh, they say, Madam, time can We don't have the time to read. And they keep procrastinating and they talk of the writer's block. I said, I don't believe in the writer's block. They say, nee, Madam, hota to hai, writer's block. I said, it's not hua isliye I'm saying. Writer's block. If you are a passionate soul, if you're passionate about something, if you have a passionate intensity about mm -hmm. writing, mm -hmm. never have a yeah. Thanks for your wise words. Youngsters will surely benefit from your observations, from your insights, from your tips. I wish I the... Yeah? I don't know whether they are wise words, but they are mad words. And I believe that madness counts in this sane world. Coming from you at this uh, uh, juncture... They are surely wise words, full of wisdom. You have reached that uh, level where you can surely um, pass on your wisdom to the youngsters. So thanks again. I wish you the very best for your future projects. Thanks, Dr. Santosh Makaya. Thanks, viewers. In the next episode, we will be back again with yet another important guest with you. Till then, bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was an honor being here. Thank you. Thank you.